Hello and welcome in another Paint With Me episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the last one. I had quite a few views and likes and I hope you like it. I did show my friend. I couldn't wait till I see her. So she already seen um, the shop front of her studio and she really liked it. So um, I'm really thrilled. Uh, I'm gonna actually see her soon and hand her the artwork. Uh, an original. So today I'm making a gift for another friend of mine and she gave me permission to show this uh, reference, her house, her lovely home. Uh, it's contemporary built, uh, I think from around 70s um, in England and you can see it's going to be quite fun to creating those textures and very nice strong shape of, of the house. We're not going to include the car. Um, I want to keep it nice and simple. Um, so just we're going to take artistic liberty and not include the car. I'm not sure if I should include the house in the background. I'm not so sure. I think I might just keep it to that shape and a shape of a garage and maybe a little bit of fence but i tend to kind of keep it keep it separate so let's get to it um i'm going to draw with my mechanical pencil i have here pencil 0.7 so it's very nice and delicate i have my reference right in front of me so we're going to start with kind of planning out where is going to be top of our roof here where it's going to finish roughly in this space so we want to kind of i ha always have a little bit of a problem in distributing uh, composition within my picture because with digital uh, you can move things you can select and move no problem but when you have actually a uh, drawing like this it can be a bit tricky so i think if we do like a rule of third so the most of the house will be here here and the garage will be on the side i think that would be the best sort of solution so let me just check and i want to keep the shape of the house the angles um, let's make sure that's going to work so i think that's going to be kind of top of the roof um, that's going to be bottom of the house now I'm measuring with my pencil, I might take a different pencil or actually a brush. Uh, because if I see on my reference, it is a little bit taller than wider. So just taking measurement. Ooh, I didn't do it very precisely. So that's my how tall it is. And I'm going to make it a little bit shorter, just about. Here. And that's about middle. So, ooh, ah, oh, I'm so clumsy, seriously. So let's try that again. It might be easier with a ruler or something a bit less wobbly. Just as gestimating a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna lose my use my left arm just to where that is okay so this is the sh kind of square we want to work and i'm not using the ruler deliberately because i want this drawing this painting to be very loose very delicate that's gonna be our house here and that's a top roof and now i'm kind of i'm taking my pencil and i see at what angle is that roof it always helps me to estimate what angle that should be. Just easier to see that. Okay. Very straight, very good. So that's the angle of the roof and that's pretty much straight house, straight cube. There's nothing too complicated in that shape. So I'm happy with that. I might do a little bit of a volume to this roof. And remember, don't worry, um, well, I don't worry too much about drawing because it's all going to be erased once I ink it over. Okay, so we have quite large windows just here, almost at the top. So I'm just creating that band. 
and then there's a bit of a gap. It's all very guesswork, guys. I, I am not architect because this house would be very, very wonky if I was an architect. <laughs> that would be not a good job. So that's about here in the same line. So we want a nice satisfaction satisfying shapes and something that you will recognize this house so that's it they are a bit square so maybe a little bit wider okay and then in inside you have a bit of a white just to give the shape uh, because that's what's going to be a recognizable by this um by those details and another set and this window is actually like a long all the way to the to the ground so I think next um, drawing session I might do something um, slightly different I quite fancy doing New York townhouse by the way I absolutely dream almost every night about going to New York. Seriously, I don't know what it is. If anyone here happens to be from New York, let me know. I just so want to go. I want to see different part of the world. Okay, so there's this detail here. That's going to be fun to do. Here, I'm just going to do a little hint. Okay, so they kind of like a little square, square little thing. I'm just doing so I remember to ink it. I don't want to do every single little detail. I'll do it when I get there. Mm, this is going so far so good. And we have a bit of a lawn. So we're going to do that foreground. Okay, some birds, which is little bushes and things. Always lovely to do that. I told you before, I think I absolutely love doing uh, plants. And this is like a rose bush, so we could actually add that plant in bloom. A little bit of kind of soil here. Lovely. And I think I'm going to leave the space here. I'm not going to do anything so uh, with neighbours. Now we need to do a little bit of a garage. So this garage is a little bit higher than our windows here. Oh, I forgot about that details here. I honestly sometimes forget the most obvious thing. And when I do portraits and things like that, I do forget to do eyebrows and ears. It's like, yeah, you have to do eyebrows and ears, otherwise... It doesn't look like like it's the right person. Oh, that's so cute so far. And there's a little path. And there's a bit of a grass. So we have foreshortening here. So that means this is very squashed. So I need to kind of forget that is grass and just follow that shape. Because that's what it is. So we can see that perspective. Okay, cool. Now this is going to be parking sort of bricks. That's fine. And then the angle. Angle is important. And how far is that garage going to go? Again, it's a square. A uh, square. Yeah, square shape. So it kind of goes lightly over that house. Let's do a little bit higher, a little bit. It's kind of almost like a half of this house, so we're going to keep that right. It's okay to measure things. Oh, that's a bit bigger than that. Oh my goodness, guys, it's such a windy day. Very bitter cold in England. I cannot believe we have such a cold weather still. Because I was hoping, yeah, we can say goodbye to winter. I almost went to the the place um, to buy all the lovely plants but I had kind of hold on because I remember sometimes March time you can get even in April really 
you can get very cold weather. Oh my goodness. I don't think you can hear that wind, but it's very much blowing here. Okay, and we have the carriage door. Very cute. And then from the garage, there goes that little angle. Let's check the angle. That's about right. Okay. And there's quite um, specific. So I'm going to keep it very simple. I don't think I'm going to create it into kind of 3D look but quite flat i don't think there's any point good and here comes a little fence i might actually include that fence because it's characteristic but then if i include the fence here um, you know what i'm going to change my mind and get rid of that fence and just keep it like that that's it and that will be enough i might do actually a little bush here so just so it looks pretty <laughs> always finish with a little bush <laughs> no one will know mm, now we need to kind of include perspective for this um oh my goodness me unbelievable i would prefer it was, it was raining outside and we have that lovely atmosphere of um, listening to the rain so that's about perspective nothing mm, goes that far Okay, and oh, I'm not sure how to do that. I think I'm just gonna get to a little hints of that drive without going too much into detail because you can only see that those little hints of things. Um, and in the background, I think I might do like a very, very um, just a hint again of that tree, so with a very faint paint actually what i might do i might not even ink that bit i might just use paint that would be better okay so we have our sketch and i'm pretty happy with that for now oh let's make that puff because that puff is quite characteristic so anything that is quite characteristic you might want to keep mm, that's okay Otherwise, um, the house might not look like like the house we're trying to achieve. So, just like in the last episode, I'm going to use my pens. And I'm going to start with my Lamy pen. And then whatever needs to be um, thicker, you know what? I'm actually going to do that tree with ink. Because that's going to look nice and expressive. So just double checking and everything's good i think this window could be a little bit wider because it, it's more of a rectangular than square just like that just last little look because once you ink it you cannot fix that really easily but now it has more of a rectangular shape that's fine okay warm up your hands and time to ink my favorite bit so start make sure you don't grasp grasp your pen too hard i'm gonna give it a little bit of expressive feel confident yet delicate so you have a little break in that line Mm, don't keep it too stiffly, too, too strongly. Okay. From the top. I'm trying to be careful not to go over with my hand because there's nothing you can do after that. Once that's done, that's done. So I'm just waiting a little bit to finish here. 
So have you tried uh, doing this technique before when you just to do your ink and then watercolor? I would love to hear if you, you had any success with that or any, any trials. I'm always curious because it's very much a monologue, guys. I can never know who's watching the videos, what you up to. And I'm really, really always interested to hear. I would love to know. I'm a nosy girl. Okay, and that's about it. There's a little bit there. I'm really lucky to have my friend on my doorstep. I got lovely friends. Oh look, I made a mistake. I'm gonna make it into kind of underneath area. Oh dear. That's what happens when I talk and paint. Oh dear. I'm kind of scared to put my hand there, but I think I have to now. Cause like doing that in the air. It's not giving me great results. Well, what can I do if it doesn't work out? I can always go and do it again. So never feel like it's the end of the world. Let's do that texture now, I think. I'm going to close that kind of little red. It's going to be fun to paint. So that will be included and then the brickwork I think we're just going to do hints of. It's the same story here and they're kind of more square those little tiles here than rectangular. Okay that's about good. Now we can go into the garage area. There are kind of two layers here and the door. A little handle. Why not? I have to say I do enjoy doing those little details the most. Mm. Give it nice composition here. Even if something is slightly different, it's your artistic license to put whatever you prefer. And this rose bush is quite characteristic. I'm going to put some roses in here. My friend loves plants, loves flowers. I think she'll be happy with that. And then just a bit of a Bushes here, bushes here, and that beautiful chunky tree at the back. I'm not sure if I might make it with that big brush, big uh, pen. Just hint here and there of that drive because you don't have to literally paint everything. Sometimes it's better just just to do little bits. Just if you focus on too much detail, that area will be more special. More um, you'll be putting attention in that area specifically. Oh, we almost done, guys. Huh? keep forgetting how quickly it goes once I start inking. So I'm going to use both of those pens and let's add a little bit of thicker line with my uh, pen with a special nib, sailor pen. I'm just going to make that tree a little bit more organic. It's an experiment. Maybe I should have done it on a separate piece of paper, but I'm just going to irregular lines. 
and now I'm going to use the other one just to make a thinner, thinner lines. I can twist my pen as well. So adding those little branches and you can go into as much detail as you like. I think I kind of regret not making it like a very uh, fainty just a watercolor in the background but it's a bit late now just adding a little bit more details a bit more shadows but this um sailor pen would be great to do those shadows under some areas so it doesn't look so perfect it just gives a bit of irregularity Anywhere where shadows will occur. Under the windows. And just anywhere I feel like it's going to work. And the plants just to give it a little bit of a 3D effect so not too flat. always like to do foliage I'm not even looking at my reference now I'm just kind of thinking where would that be the, the shadow grounded a little bit Just to give that impression of looseness, adding on a bit more here around the the door, under the alarm. Yeah, it's starting to look really good. Just gonna add a little bit more leaves, details. I still have to learn how to do that so it looks good on the foliage. The need to look at some of the comics, maybe how people draw draw that. So it's starting to get in shape just looking all over the picture and trying to add wherever it needs adding on it's almost done but every time I, I think oh it needs a little bit of here and there I think I'm done with this one for now. So back to my thin line and a little bit more detail that those blinds are quite characteristic. So I'm going to add more in here. I nearly forgot about those bricks so I'm just adding a little bit of hints here and there however one day I'm going to do experiment and I'm going to do the whole thing uh, thoroughly uh, with bricks and see how how it looks like so I'm gonna do identical two maybe houses quick little pictures and see how it looks like just hint of brickwork because that's how I like it at the moment and proper bricks from start to finish so that would be interesting to see because I think it, once you put too much detail it might be too busy taking too much attention so I prefer it when it is just hints of things there we go it's almost finished here Let's not forget about the garage little brick area. Just here and there. I said that so many times now, you're probably sick and tired of me saying the same thing. I 
just so it has a nice balance I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, blades of grass a little bit of texture I don't want to make it too regular to the samey so it actually has breaks in between I'm gonna add my big chunky sailor pen and I really like the way it adds a little bit of looseness that's really good so at this stage have I done have I finished I'm going to have to wait for ink to to dry uh, and we're gonna move into rubbing off the pencil but I'm still going to add a few more details so yeah I think we're ready for rubbing off so now it's nice and dry I waited for a good 10 minutes and I'm just gonna move it to see if it's still glistening in any way but it's dry so I'm going to delicately rub her off with my Faber Castell rubber maybe carefully there just somewhere where it's not going to be so obvious and kind of circular motion gently This is a good rubber, it does the job. But because I was working with my mechanical pencil, it's not that difficult to rub it off. Delicate, thin lines. I think it's a good detail a good level of detail here uh, one day I'm going to do experiment and I'm gonna do two version one with a loads of detail and the other one with minimal with almost hint of a hint and I'll see what I like better so that's great I can uh, get rid of that dirt before I paint you don't want that in a way because it could get stuck with the paint, that's it's not good. Okay, so now we're ready for painting, I think. Uh, I've got my little scrap of paper here, so uh, I can always use that to sample colors. i got my kitchen towel as well. And we're going to start with the sky. I'm going to mix blue and green a little bit to get that nice turquoise uh, blue because just blue itself it could be a little bit boring and predictable so I tend to find a little bit extra for my paint a little bit more I'm just going to use my spray and going to spray that paint just to re reactivate it just all over not too much just a little bit so it's easier to start using that paint so I need to prepare the color cerulean uh, no sorry that that's different shade of blue stronger and green and yellow this is green so we need to add more blue to it so like I said, we are aiming for kind of turquoise, which is green and blue. Cerulean blue is my favorite. That's why you can already see the bottom of that pan. 
and I think I'm happy with that color so I'm just gonna start closer to house distribute that paint and you have to be quick because it dries so fast I'm gonna go over that tree as well and I'm deliberately leaving a bit of a white space around the house and I love that effect whatever you you're doing just leave a little bit of white it just gives that nice freshness to the painting it's it, it can breathe so i need to be super quick i'm going to use some water now and just create that gradient so it goes into thinner 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 into nothing from the strongest point to the thinnest and it's getting a little harder to distribute that to make that gradient because we already it, the paint's already drying so yeah best to do it fresh and then use with water but hmm it's not easy that's looking good So next we need to prepare the um, brickwork for this house uh, so things I'm gonna use like a raw amber and a bit of a red I'm gonna add a little bit of red I always tend to mix the colors even if it's just out of a pan just a tiny bit with something else just to give it a little bit of more interesting color you can make it warmer or you can make it colder you can make it a bit more pastel -y looking so we're going to start with just raw amber and I'm going here and there leaving some white around this is our first wash and then after that we're going to go a little bit stronger but that first first wash it's worth to do it in a delicate way so I can always build it up now going almost wet on wet technique when there's a that paint's going to mix up a little bit with what's already there it's not very wet the, the first layer so i'm saying it's almost wet to wet wet on wet it's like a thin glaze over giving the depth okay and going darker with burnt umber I can see correctly and just dropping those darker bits under the windows where the shadows would be under the roof anywhere that would indicate some changes or even brickwork that's a great way to add interest otherwise everything is a bit wishy-washy and you have a boring painting Okay, and I'm just looking at the picture what I should add uh, light red is a nice one to add those rusty kind of tones it's great to add a bit of red but adding a bit of warmth and I'm adding a lizard crimson to it which is a cold red and then I can add some warm red instead trying things out cadmium red is warm and there we go we're just going over those tiles and I love how the sky the coolness of the sky is playing with that red opposite red although I have to say the sky the the, the blue sky is quite warm on the warm side so it still works together that bounces off because it's if everything was the same sort of warmish tones that might be a little bit boring and you might not see that dimension and add paints gray with my Chinese white I have two pans of Chinese white next to each other because I use it so much and I'm gonna mix, mix it up with paint gray and it gives you a lovely gray color you can leave it as, as that or you can add 
different tones like warm or cold to give it a different color different temperature of gray there are so many and just filling up those windows because i don't like i used to fill the windows with any sort of blue but that just didn't look right so now i'm using gray instead and i like that more Let's not forget about that roof. And the garage area as well. Everything's starting to come together now. And the bottom of those, uh, this foliage as well, because that will give us dimension again, more more of a feeling of a real object, real 3D object in the world rather than a flat image. Here and there, adding on a little bit of shadow. That's great. You can go to town with the, the shadow, the amount you put on. But I think this is just right for what I'm making here. The, the daily cut sort of little washed out, little bit of that color play. I think with time I'm going to pinpoint my style a bit more. The things I like, things I dislike. I definitely, definitely love when inking with that thicker line, adding on a little bit more shadows, bit more interest, bit more looseness with my sailor pen. I love it. So that was a great discovery. I didn't know that that long ago. So as long as if you paint, if you even make a mistake, so for example today with that tree, I would make that tree different next time. Next time I would make a hint of that tree with my watercolors rather than um, ink. But this is something I would not know if I didn't make that choice. So just going to play with the greens now. Hookah's green is excellent choice, adding a little bit of blue but that might be a bit overpowering no that's good and just gonna doll it up make it duller with a bit of an orange so if you're not sure you can just start delicate wash and you can add on add on and this is sap green i believe sometimes sap green can be a bit too intensive i'm gonna mix it with yellow cadmium yellow must be my favorite yellow i love it leaving some gaps for white to breathe And again, with, with the foliage, I like to use at least three different shades um, and three different uh, value, dark light uh, of color to give it a bit of depth. So I'm trying to look at the whole picture together now and kind of make sure it looks harmonious. It looks right what's on our color wheel how we can make it less vibrant by adding a bit of a blue and with time you're going to learn how much you're going to change it so that drive doesn't look too shouty we want it very delicate shade Okay, maybe too far. I'm just going to take it off. If you're quick on your on your decisions, you can actually uh, quite a lot can be wiped out with with that kitchen towel. That door. I think I want to make a little tiny bit more intensive in that door. So um, it's good to take it slow because you can take glazes upon glazes and lasers <laughs> so you can make more and more just mixing with a little bit of paint gray just to create those shadows 
adding a little bit of interest. And again, I'm looking on the whole image and trying to balance it out, not just on focusing on that little area, that little area. It's good to, to think of everything all together. Now I'm taking thinner brush because I think that I'm going to have much better control when I have a thinner, lovely brush. Very strong red because we want that little alarm box on the top that makes it quite distinctive about this house. like Ferrari red. Should we do a little bit of a road? I think so. It's gonna again give a little bit of depth, a bit of level. And super easy, paints grey and Chinese white going to add a teeny splotch of cadmium yellow that went a bit too far so I'm going back to my Payne's grey and Chinese white bit of water and this is the grey I adore and will go with all the warm tones I already have here so very sloppy kind of quite watery just gonna add a little bit glaze all over that driveway a little bit of redness here. The beauty of watercolour is that you can add many layers on top of each other and it's going to create a gorgeous effect. So now we need to wait for this to dry because I was wondering if I can go over with my pen my uh, POSC pen just to reintroduce those white frames. It is not a very opaque so that might be a problem and remember with gouache, gouache is not exactly um, archival I believe. I don't, I'm not sure 100% so we're going to have to um, leave that painting to dry but before that I'm just going to add a little bit of flowers because uh, that would work nicely um, just to have those roses or flowers but I think that's too much <laughs> I have chickened out and if you're really quick on your decision you can uh, just dab it in your kitchen towel and it will reabsorb most of that paint make that nice and strong beautiful red brave red so we need to leave it now and i'll have to use my posca now now's the time uh, but i need to make sure that paint is completely dry okay Should we add a little details there? Hmm, that's not a good idea. I think I'm gonna keep it grey. I'm just trying my hardest here just to... But what I need to do is let it dry and come back with that white Posca. But no, I have to play with things. I think the simpler you leave it, the better with the windows otherwise it's just too much detail and it becomes a bit tiring to look at so really really need to leave it alone and dry it so um, that's my pen now we have it all dried out and I can go over however I don't think that's the effect I was going for because now everything is just blending into mm, very, very 
indistinctive. We're losing that frame. We cannot really see that white frame. So I don't think that was a good idea. If we had a very dark windows, then yes. And I think I'm going to go that route rather than making a lighter frames. I'm going to make inside darker and that's going to create that effect of um, contrast. So back to my Payne's Grey. And with a very small brush, I'm just kind of painting, avoiding the white window frames and just painting over inside. Again, it's a bit of a risky mo move, but I don't think I have much to lose because at this stage, the frame's not going to get any lighter. So look, that made a good effect. And I think I will use that in the future. I might be a little bit more precise in the future with uh, establishing that. But it's not end of the world. You have to be very planny with the uh, with, uh, watercolors. And there's still quite a few things you can fix, like this, for example. So that looks better already, in my opinion. And I'm just going to add so it looks harmonious with the windows upstairs. They're also going to have darker inside. And it's going to dry a little lighter as well. So don't panic if it's so very dark. So this negative space technique seems to be working pretty much on those windows. And this is something I learned today. And this is something I want to use in the future. So I'm just going to add a few more kind of shadows. I feel like it might need, it gradually needs to be added. Also, it's a good idea to leave the painting for five minutes, go and uh, grab yourself a cup of tea and come back, look at it with a fresh eye. That is always a, a good one. Sometimes I just forget bits, so just look everywhere and make sure you don't miss any bits, any pieces. So these are my watercolor pencils and these are from surprise, surprise, a Faber Castell. Uh, they are very nice. They're very buttery, smooth to use. And you can actually use them, pet a draw with them, even mix the colors and then use water to, to uh, mix them. Or you can just use them on top of your uh, watercolor painting it just needs to be dry so don't go over any wet painting because that's not going to be very good look at that it's just like sweeties they're so beautiful i love uh, keeping them in that one big uh, wallet and i have actually collected them one by one i created a spreadsheet so i wouldn't buy double and I enjoy that so much, <laughs> putting them in the spreadsheet and making sure I haven't got double colors and oh, honestly, some hobbies I have, I just surprise myself. Uh, so we added just that definition with the flowers. So it's nice to give it here and there and you can even go after it dries, you can add on a more tones to it. So we're just going to use this uh, hooker's green into the garage door just a little bit to add a little bit of definition here and there. You can go into very detailed uh, drawing with the pen color pencils, but the way I like to do it is a little bit intensity, a bit of variety, color variety, a little bit of detail and a little bit of texture, especially on the foliage. I might add a little bit of scruffy little leaves and stuff so that's cool it's good to experiment so nice just to do one session when you don't care what it's going to look like and you just do marks and see what 
effect it's going to bring you. What effect is that going to give you? So cadmium yellow, I thought I'm going to add a little bit of lightness on end of those uh, bushes because that might give it a lightness at the end. Really lovely. So it looks like the light is hitting them. And the same on those little ones so they're not left out here and there on the grass. I do like work in harmony, so if I add it here, I might add it to other area as well. So we're almost done now. We just have a few. Do we need to anything else to adding? Oh yes, we need to take the tape out. So with this one, I'm doing it very gently. I'm just kind of checking if it's going to come off. If it wouldn't come off and I start feeling like it's tugging on the paper, I would use a hairdryer or a little heater just to make that glue easier to peel off. Um, and before I put the tape, I kind of went with it over my leg so it would uh, become less sticky. I just touched uh, my trousers with it if that makes sense so it wasn't that super super sticky oh I feel like this one is a little bit tighter so let me come from this one first and it's something you have to feel you're gonna feel that if you do it a few times but hopefully it's not gonna be ruined by the very last bit I'm just too lazy to go into the hairdryer area but it's almost done. Yeah, one more bit. Not stressful at all. One little bit left on the bottom. There we go. Oh, oh my goodness, it might just work. I hope so. I hope my friend will like this picture. I really hope so. There we go, there we go, there we go. Yes! Well done, me. I'm very happy. So this is our finished uh, image. I like how this turned out. Like I said, in the future I might try something in the distance to be done just with watercolour. Let's just compare. This is our image. This is my artistic license and my approach. Uh, I like it. I hope uh, my friend will like it too. And guys, if you enjoyed that episode, please let me know what you've been up to. Let me know where you're from and please leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe to see some more of my content. I would be so happy if you would leave any sort of mark. Till next time. Bye bye.